this is one of those movies that gives new meaning to the term playing with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Well, you know what we wanted to, um, uh, we, you have to bleep this out, but you know what we wanted the ad line to be? Predestination, go fuck yourself. <laughs> so what, you're a cop? I'm a temporal agent. We prevent crime before it takes place. What is it? It's a time machine. Don't ever exceed the jump limit. It can be problematic. If you ever want to stop the fizzle bomber, you'll never get another chance. Time, it catches up with us all. I imagine what really appealed to you was sort of the battle that the characters go to between free will and predestination. And um, I also understand that you work closely with the filmmakers and made suggestions. Uh, what sort of suggestions did you make um, for your character? Well, you can't. Well, first of all, it's why I like to work with people. You know, I've worked with Richard Linklater eight times. This is my second movie with the Spearigs. Uh, later this year, Good Kill's coming out. I made three movies with Andrew Nichol. I really believe if you can work with people and fight with people and, um, uh, and work, you know, you gain trust, right? Yeah. You know? And so I think the second time we were working together, they understood that um, I wanted to help them make the best movie possible, not I was. You know, some actors, I think people worry about, they come in that they're being self-serving or something. And I didn't do anything except ask them a ton of questions. I, we all wanted the same thing, which is for you to be able to watch this movie twice and have it be better the second time. You know, in a lot of time travel movies, we're all science fiction geeks, mm -hmm. and a lot of time travel movies fall apart in your hands the second time you watch them. You're like, oh, wait, but if that happened, then that wouldn't, this is so stupid. Why didn't anybody, didn't they talk about it? And so we did. We talked about it for about a year, and then we got really serious with the graphs, and we, we literally, our rehearsal room was all, I've never, you know, every movie's different, but, uh, and of course there's this other weird thing that had to happen for this movie to work, which is that we needed an actress that was relatively unknown to give the performance of a lifetime. Oh, yeah. you, you, you know, we knew that whoever played this part had to slay it. And we knew that if it was Kate Blanchett or Kate Winslet or any of the usual suspects to deliver a dynamite performance, it would be spoiled. Because you'd know that, I mean, the, there's a reveal that the movie rests upon. Um, that if you, and you know, you hate that. I hate seeing a movie where you just watch somebody act. You want to be watch the characters. Yes. You, you know, and you want to fall in love with the story. And, and having, one of the things that's wonderful about discovering an actor in any movie, whether it's, I mean, I think part of why we love Days and Confused, for example, is that you're just discovering all those actors, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's and, this, and that was essential to this movie, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, it's a very good point, because you, you and, like, Sarah and Noah, you inhabit the characters. As opposed to act, I mean, Sarah's especially. Sarah has Sarah's, an amazing role. Sarah's is just the most challenging, and yeah. and I mean, Noah, for my money, he has this kind of profundity about him. Yeah, he's just he's one. Of, he always was that way, even as a kid. You know, even in Shine and stuff. He, but as he's getting older, he's he's getting more powerful, and um, as a performer. But Sarah's performance is is uh, is the engine of the movie. And um, speaking of Boyhood, that's one of the best movies I've seen this year, by the way. I just want to say. Thank you. And, I mean, you've had a big year, and you've managed to go from part to part, and you've avoided typecasting for the most part. Uh, what's your secret behind that? Working in different kinds of films. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, I've never felt that I had such confidence as a performer that I could shape change myself and really create different characterizations that... I've largely worked within the boundaries of my own personality, um, but if I can work inside other genres, then I'm in different worlds, and the different worlds kind of uh, push you to be a little bit better. I, I worked, um, when I was really young, I did a movie, I had a small part in a movie with Jeremy Irons, a little known movie called Waterland, but he, he would talk, he was really good to me, and he used to talk about he had a very specific personality, he does, and he talked about how that was kind of created a box for him as a performer, and that he really felt that if he asked the audience to go too far out of that box, you had to just push the boundaries a little bit all the time. If you go too far out, it didn't, they don't believe you. Um, and one of the ways that I've done that is just by, you know, whether it's choosing a movie like Sinister or choosing a movie, um, 
you know, this is a sci-fi movie. I, 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 later this year, I have a Western coming out. I've done a horror movie. I've done, I like to do art house movies. I, I'm playing a, a movie that reimagines the life of Chet Baker. You know, so I like, if you just do, that's a biopic genre. You know what I mean? If you keep, <laughs> yeah. if you keep the, doing the different genres, it helps me be different. You can do this. What are you saying? What's that got to do with me? You're the only one given to the world through a paradox. You must lay the seeds for the future. But I know where I come from. But where do all you zombies come from? What if I could put him in front of you? Would you kill him?